Are you serious about your music? I know you are. I know you're serious about the ukulele. And that's why this video is for you. This one is the 10 most important musical terms that you need to know. All right, welcome to You Collect the Pros. Well, actually, the You Collect the Pros Nation. I'm Terry Carter. I appreciate you being here. This is going to be a fantastic video. I love this stuff. And this is really important, very important stuff. If you're really serious about your music, which I know you are, because that's why you're here with me at You Collect the Pros. But anyway, if you're new to the channel, we do ukulele tutorials, we do reviews, we also do some guitar lady and a little baritone as well. So uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell notification. So we're gonna go over the 10, yes, right, all 10 of the most important musical terms that you need to know. Now what's great about it, it, it works totally perfectly for ukulele, but it also works well for other instruments as well. So as we go through this list, I'd love for you to leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew the things I'm talking about, or maybe there's something new that you're learning in this video. Um, all right, so shall we dive in? Number one, most important musical term you need to know is the musical alphabet. So, I mean, this is key. <laughs> Matter of fact, I had to make sure I had this on the list today. It's so, so important. So it's really simple. All you have to know is that we have seven letters of our musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and that's it. Um, now, those seven notes, I mean, they make up they make up music, right? So those seven, now, some of you are gonna say, okay, well, what about sharps and flats? Okay, yeah, we have sharp notes, we have flat notes as well. Don't need to be worried about it right now. Just know your basic musical alphabet is gonna help you with the rest of these uh, ones that we go over. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right, the second most important musical term you need to know is the staff. <laughs> that is the, I mean, that's, that's what our music is written on. That's the basic of everything is our musical staff. Now, what is a musical staff? That is our staff that's made up of five lines. That's right, one, two, three, four, five. If you count from the bottom, moving up one, two, three, four, five. And that's where we're going to put all our notes when we get to music. What notes are those? A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right, so the staff is super, super important. But because we're an ukulele player here, you're also going to see a musical staff called tab, tablature or T-A-B, tab. Okay, that one's also very important as well uh, because that's going to help you play probably music that's a little harder than you can play like if you were just trying to read the music on the staff, right? So the tab is just made up of a series of numbers on four lines. Remember that staff had five, the tab had four lines, one, two, three, four, each one of those lines for the tab representing a string on your ukulele. And then the numbers indicate what fret you played on. So if we're here on the first string, open one, two, three, four, and you see those numbers going up. All right, our third most important, and by the way, how did you do on the first two? Did you know those already? Did you know the musical alphabet? Did you know the staff and the tab? Leave that comment below. And by the way, since you're here, make sure to smash that like button. All right, where are we at here? Number three, the most important thing you need to know is your clef. Now, for the ukulele, if we're just strictly in the world of ukulele, you're gonna see the treble clef, all right? You're gonna see that treble clef. Matter of fact, you should try to practice drawing this treble clef. That's your good practice. But you're gonna wanna know the treble clef also called the G clef. And I'm going to show you why. It's because this note G, as this treble clef wraps around that line, the second line up, it wraps around is a G note. That's why we call it a G clef. And that's also one easy way for you to remember that one note. And then you can remember all the other notes based off of that. So that's the treble clef. The other clef that's used a lot is the bass clef, also called the F clef. Now, we don't have to really worry about that here on our ukulele. But I'll give you a little tip here. When you look at that bass clef with those two dots, that line in between those dots is the F note, hence the word, the F clef. So we have the treble clef or G clef, the bass clef or the F clef. All right, the number four thing of the most important things that you need to know, the most important musical terms. And by the way, if you like this stuff, this is key. Like this is just key to music. This is a great way. This is how you can communicate with other musicians. And like I said, it's 
not necessarily ukulele, it's guitar, it's voice, it's whatever as well. So you have to know this stuff. You know, you got to get beyond just playing songs. <laughs> I know we love to play songs, but you want to learn and dive a little bit deeper. By the way, if this stuff interests you, I have a really, really great uh, beginning music theory course at ukulelepros.com. That's absolutely fantastic. You don't need to have any experience. You might want to check that out. All right, number four now. Remember that staff? We talked about the staff. We talked about that five lines. It doesn't matter if we're in the staff or the tab. We'll use the staff for now. But what separates the staff is what we call bar lines. Okay, those bar lines are the vertical lines that separate the staff. And then once you have the bar lines, it breaks those up into what we call bars or measures. And that's going to be really important for the next thing that we're going to talk about. So remember, bar lines separate the staff, and then they break them into bars and or if you want to call them measures, that's fine as well. All right, number five. And by the way, how you doing? We've done four already. Did you know any of those? Did you learn something new? Leave a comment below. I'd love to uh, hear what you uh, think. All right, number five. This is really, really important. This is the time signature. Now, the time signature is going to tell you how many beats per measure. Remember, we just talked about the measure, how many beats per measure. So most typically, you're going to see four, four. What does that mean? Four beats per measure. Now, the bottom number four means what kind of note gets to be. So really, when you look at four, four, it means four quarter notes per measure, or if it's equivalent. Okay, you don't have to get too crazy with that, to be honest with you, okay? Don't worry about it. Just right now, talk about that. Let's talk about that top number, that four. All you have to know is that four beats per measure. So every measure, one, two, three, four. New measure, one, two, three, four and so on and so on. Now that's four, four. What's another common one? What's another common one? And by the way, if you know another time signature, just leave it in the comments below. All right, but another one that's used a lot is three, four. Okay, very simple, three beats per measure. Remember that bottom number, that four just means what kind of note gets the beat. That's a quarter note, so three quarter notes per measure. That's a little advanced, it's okay. It's good for you to know it. As you hear this more and more, it's gonna sink in. So anyway, three, four just means three beats per measure. One, two, three, one, two, three, and so forth. Now, one more, I'm gonna throw one more in at you, it's kinda cool, um, is six, eight. <laughs> six, eight, this top number six means six beats per measure. The bottom number eight, we, again, what kind of note gets a beat? That eight means eighth note, so six eighth notes per measure. And that's when you see more like a blues, like one, two, three, four, five, six. So really cool discounting to six. All right, so those are three of the most important time signatures. Now there's others, and I want you to leave a comment below if I didn't mention the one that you were thinking about. All right, number six on our list. Can you believe it? By the way, what are you playing right now? What ukulele do you have in your hands? Or if you don't even have a ukulele, let me know what ukulele or what instrument. Maybe you don't even have an instrument. Leave that comment below. I'm playing my Koloha Mango. This is a KTM-00 MG, the mangoes from some the one and only Koaloha ukuleles. If you dig this ukulele or in the need of another ukulele, some accessories, check out my store. That's the number one store online, store.ukulelepros.com. All right, the next thing is rhythm. We got to talk about rhythm. We've talked about the time signature. We've talked about the measures, all that stuff. We got to talk about the different rhythms you're going to encounter. Now, we're not going to get into each one and, and get too involved with it, but I'm going to give you the basic ones today, okay? First one, whole note, real simple. Looks like a circle gets four beats. One, two, three, four. When I mean gets four beats, means that sound, I only hit it once on beat one, but that sound rings out four beats. All right, the next ones are half notes. They get two beats. One, two, three, four. That means when you're in a measure of four, four, you're gonna strum a beat one and beat three. Next is quarter notes. They get one beat. One, two, three, four. All right, the next one here would be eighth notes. They receive a half of a beat, which means we can do eight of them in a measure of four, four. One and two and three and four. And, and the last one for today is a 16th note. 16th notes get uh, one fourth of a beat. So that means you need four of them to equal one beat. You mean 16 of them to equal a measure of four, four. These would be one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the... All right, so real quick recap. What are they? Whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes and 16th note. Get those down. You're gonna go a long way, kid. All right, number six on our list. By the way, this is a top 10. 
most important musical terms that you need to know. By the way, make sure to smash that like button. All right, key signatures. All right, so after, if you're looking at staff here, you got your treble clef, then you have your key signatures, and then you have your time signature. So we kind of skipped it because key signatures are important, but I wanted to cover those other things first. By the way, how are you doing? Let me know, leave a comment below. All right, so the key signature, that's telling you what key you're in, right? Every, every song has a key. Some songs, especially if you like jazz, go into multiple keys. But uh, when it has no time signature, which a lot of our songs do mean treble clef, time signature, nothing in between, that's the key of C. That's just your music off it. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, if it has one sharp, again, between the treble clef and the time signature, you have that one sharp, that's F sharp, that's the key of G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. That's the key of G. Now, what happens if it has a flat? By the way, how many sharps or flats can you have in, a, in the key signature? Leave that comment below. Let's say it has one flat, that's B flat. It puts you in the key of F, which is F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. It's going up there, F. All right, so anyways, sharps and flats, those are your key signatures. You'll, you'll get into those more. I just wanted you to know about them, start understanding them. And then again, like I said earlier, the more you hear this stuff, the more you dive into it, it's gonna sink in. So don't feel like you have to understand everything I'm talking about today. Just know these musical terms because they are the most important. All right, number eight on our list. By the way, how you doing? Put a comment below, I wanna know how you're doing. How you, do you know all these terms? What could be the next three? What could be eight, nine, or 10? What the heck could I talk about? All right, number eight is chord. All right, so not only just the definition of what a chord is, do you know that? What definition also, but what they are, okay? So chords, can you play a chord on a saxophone? No, you cannot. <laughs> can you play a chord on a flute? No, you cannot. Can you play a chord on ukulele? Yes, you can. Guitar, absolutely. Piano, yes. Harp, absolutely. All right, so what a chord is, is when you play two, or more notes at the same time. So not all instruments are chordal instruments. A lot of instruments are just melody instruments. Matter of fact, our voice is a melody instrument because we can't sing more than one note at a time by ourselves. Sure, if we have four people, that's different. But certain instruments are chordal, ins chordal excuse me, instruments. Uh, what's great about ukulele, because it could be a melody instrument one note at a time. It could also be a a chordal instrument. So chords, very, very important. Also, to go along with this one, chord diagrams. And that's what you're gonna see, especially as a ukulele player, a guitar player, these chord diagrams are showing you exactly how to play these chords. Four string open, third string open, second string open, and third finger on the first string, third fret, and strum it, and that gives you a C chord. All right, chords and chord diagrams. All right, number nine on our list, and by the way, if you're digging this stuff, if you really want to dive in, I have, I mean, I have ukulectopros.com, the ukulectopros nation, unbelievable. I got so many great courses up there. We got a premium membership. We do a weekly Q and A's. We got a worldwide community. Absolutely fantastic. I'm just thinking though, I have this course, the 23 ultimate chord progressions. We dive into all these really cool chord progressions. And then I get into the theory of all the chord progressions as well. Really cool course. But anyway, check out ukulectopros.com for all that stuff. All right, number nine, number nine. All right, this one is repeat signs, all right? So repeat signs in music, this is very important because this saves you from having to rewrite the same thing over and over again if you can just add a repeat sign. Now there's two types of repeat sign. There's a beginning repeat sign and there's an end repeat sign. Now, sometimes they don't have the beginning one, they just have the end one. Let's say you go through these four measures here and then there's a repeat sign, but you don't see anything else. If you see that, it always means go back to the beginning. So if you have an end repeat sign and not a beginning repeat sign, go back to the beginning. If you see a beginning repeat sign and an end repeat sign, it means you repeat however many times that is those measures. And then sometimes you'll put like, you'll see like maybe times four, and that means play those repeated measures four times instead of just the normal two times. All right, very, very important to understand, at least when you see it and recognize it, repeat signs. All right, here we are, number 10. How are you doing, by the way? Do you dig this stuff? I would love to see. Leave a comment below. How many of those nine have you known already? And which ones are new to you? Make sure to leave, it, leave, leave that comment below. And by the way, thank you for smashing that like button. All right. All right, number 10. Now this one, I'm just gonna call this one roadmap. <laughs> roadmap, because there's a lot of terms here. Uh, and these are all 
when you're looking at a piece of music, they're roadmap. They're telling you where to go. Matter of fact, the repeat sign is one of the most important roadmaps you need to know. But you're going to see these terms come up on when you're looking at the music and you're going to be like, hmm, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I'm going to give you the definitions and then at least when you see them, you have an idea of what they mean. First one you're going to see a lot of, very common, first ending and second ending. And typically what you'll see is this first ending will be after maybe about eight bars of music. The last maybe one or two measures will be what's called the first ending. All right. And then at the end of the repeat sign, you're going to, or at the end of that first ending, you're going to see a repeat sign. You're going to go back and you're going to do it all again, except this time you're going to skip the first ending and play the second ending. So what this allows you to do is essentially play the same eight bars, but the first time it's going to be slightly different than the second time. And again, it saves you time writing stuff out. All right, the next term, just understand these. And then as you practice your music, you're going to get into them. First one is DC. You see this a lot of times at the end of a piece of music. It might just say DC. It might say DC Alcoda. It might be DC Alfine. Okay, what that means is that DC means go back to the beginning. Okay, da capo, go back to the beginning of the piece of music. So yeah, all the way back to the beginning of the piece. All right, if you see the word DS, del segno, means go back to the sign. And the sign is this little S little thing with a line through it. Okay, the S, that's the sign. So it means go back to the sign, wherever that sign is. It's not necessarily at the beginning. It could be on measure eight or it could be anywhere. So go back to the sign. And then what's attached to that a lot of times is DC Alfine or DS Alfine means stop when you go back, go stop when you see the word fine, finish. Or sometimes you'll see like DS Alcoda or DC Alcoda. That means when you see the coda sign, that's that little target thing, you're gonna jump to the very end, which is a coda, which is usually, usually an end of a piece of music that's something different than you've seen before. All right, so that's our roadmap signs. Make sure you at least understand them. And then as you practice them, you're gonna get better and better at them. All right, there's your 10 most important musical terms that you need to know as a musician, as a ukulele player. Did I miss anything? I mean, there's obviously tons and tons of stuff out there I could have missed, but um, leave that comment below. I'd love to see any of that stuff. So, all right, I really appreciate you being here. It's a lot, a lot of stuff that we went over. Should we review them? Let's recap them one last time. Number one, your musical alphabet. Number two, your staff and your tab. Number three, your clefs, treble and bass. Number four, bars and measures. Also, bar lines was included in that. Number five, your time signature. Number six, rhythms. Number seven, your key signatures. Number eight, chords and chord diagrams. Number nine, repeat signs. And all 10 of them were our roadmap, which is first ending, second ending, DC, DS, Coda, and also Fine. And by the way, Fine, that's it. That's the end of this lesson as well. So I appreciate you being here. Make sure to check out youthactorpros.com. Come be part of Youth Actor Pros Nation. We got tons of stuff up there. We got free stuff. We got courses. We got membership. Absolutely fantastic. Check out my store as well, store.youthactorpros.com. All right, appreciate all the comments. Really do. Appreciate you smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Um, anyway, have a great day. Hope you learned something new in this one, and we'll see you next time.